Hello, and in this video, I'm just going to show you how you can customize your Linux terminal in a ton of useful ways using the bash rc files. So, first of all, just go to your home directory like I'm in now, and just ls hyphen a, and the hyphen a is for all, so it shows us everything that's actually here. Now, you'll notice from my final permissions we have folder on ono, but there's also a ton of other things here, such as bash history, bash logout, bash rc, which is the one we're mainly interested in, and the profile and .sudo as admin. So let's go ahead and we'll deal with the bash rc file itself later. So let's just check everything out. So I'm in my home directory. There should really be a folder called bin here and I'm kind of worried as to why there isn't. So let's cd in bin. No such final directory, that's kind of worrying. Okay, for some reason I don't have a bin folder. I think I've, I might have accidentally deleted it. I don't know why I would do something like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to just make a directory called bin. I could swear I did this earlier, but oh well. So make a directory called bin in your home directory. We're going to cd into bin. Um, you may already have a bin directory. I know I did. I don't know where it's gone. So go into your bin folder. And we're going to make another folder called dot .files. Now, dot .files are basically going to control everything, and we're going to link to them from our bash rc. So cd into dot .files, and we're going to just make one more folder called bash, but don't go in here yet. So it's ls hyphen a. We have dot and dot dot, just ignore those, and we have bash. So we're going to use touch to create a file, and we're going to create another file named dot bash rc just using our touch command. So we're going to create that and then also for a little bit later let's just go into bash and let's make three files, in fact let's make two files we're going to touch.env and touch.aliases so let's just cd dot slash and in fact let's cd to our home directory and what we're actually going to do is we're going to use nano to edit our .bash rc file. Now you'll notice there's actually an awful lot here right now. In fact, there's so much that instead of editing it, I've changed my mind. Oops. And we're actually going to completely remove it. So we're going to remove the .bash rc, and we're going to create a new one. And we could use touch for this, but I'm using nano so it creates it and we get to edit it. And here we go, here's our new .bash rc. What we're going to do is we're going to use the source keyword to make it look for a file in another directory. So all we're going to tell this this bash rc, which is where the terminal looks for all its the stuff we're going to give to it. So it goes to this bash rc, and this bash rc goes, hey, go to that other bash rc that we made earlier in the bin directory. Source home directory, that's represented by the tilde, slash bin, slash dot files slash dot bash rc I believe that's where we put it so let's just save that and now we're going to cd bin cd dot files just check that is where it was yeah it is so oops I meant ls hyphen a there it is dot bash rc and let's just nano into the dot bash rc file now again we're going to use the source command and we're going to make it go to our .env and .aliases files. So, again, source home slash bin slash dot .files slash bash slash .env source home slash bin slash dot .files slash bash slash dot .aliases And basically, we're going to use our .env for system or environment variables, and we're going to use our .aliases file for creating aliases. And you'll learn about this more in a second. So now that we've done all of this, we're going to, in fact, let's just cd back here. Let's just make sure everything is around about functioning correctly. And we're going to do this by calling source.bashrc. So what that's now done is we call our new bashrc, so that's basically reloaded all our bashrc stuff. Now, it is letting me for the time being. Let's just I wonder if I can restart this. Um, in fact, 
let's just give it a restart quickly to get rid of our old settings because for the moment we've executed our new settings but we have not got rid of our old settings let's just log in and okie dokie so let's try and cd to our home directory in fact let's not do that let's cd to our home directory oh that's strange it works okay let's nano.bash rc is that it was supposed to um actually not work because there shouldn't actually be a system variable called home which is where the tilde always leads you but oh well let's not worry about that for now <laughs> let's just um that's thrown me, I don't know why that is. If if any Linux expert that's a lot better than me, because I am still only a beginner in Linux, knows why the tilde is still taking me to my home directory, please tell me, because before it didn't and I had to reset my home system variable. Anyway, let's go ahead and go to bin and go to dot files. And now it's all using our new system, or at least it should be. So let's cd into bash. Let's hyphen A and let's just nano our .env. Now, .env is for creating these system variables, and usually the tilde wouldn't work, and I could show you, oh, now it works, but for some reason that isn't the case. So, usually what I was going to do is I was going to export home, all in capitals, and I was just going to set that equal to where our home directory is. Now, this is actually where the tilde leads you. So. If we set this to something different, if we set it to home Joe bin, and then we save it, and we source our env, then actually now what happens, aha, you'll notice straight away, our current directory has gone from being tilde slash bin slash dot file slash bash, to being tilde slash dot file slash bash, because our new home directory is now in the bin folder. So if we just cd tilde, ls hyphen l or hyphen a rather you'll see aha we're actually in our bin directory so let's just cd to dot files and let's change that back because we don't actually want that this isn't right now i know what i've done what you just said you created one oh fine see if i care so it's because i left it empty so cd into bash then nano your dot env file and change this back to your home directory unless you like it being in the bin and now we're going to create some more that could be useful so for example I mean there are loads of system variables that you need to change for good reasons because programs use them to know where things are so let's just export maybe you want your editor to be nano by default and I also have export dot files set to home joe bin dot files now i like this because you can cd dollar sign dot files and that will always take you to that directory because when you use a dollar sign followed by the um the thing the bob it will then call that system variable and do whatever that says so if i cd dot files it'll cd and then it'll put in all this stuff here so it'll go there so if I said dollar sign editor space file name, it would do nano to that file. So we have dot files also, although I'm not going to really cover this, we can use our path variable, which is used very often. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to set it to our current path. So all of that, plus let's just say we want to add our bin directory to that. Then there we go, we've done that just like that. Again, we'll use the dollar sign to get the current system variable. But I'm going to just remove this for the time being since we don't really need this. So let's just do this and source our env file. If I now cd home, we go back to our proper home like that. And if I cd dollar sign dot files, we do that. Let's just cd back home. And if we go dollar sign editor, and then oh no dot txt then you'll see that nanos the oh no dot txt so that's our env let's just cd back to dot files and cd and bash so we can set our system variables in our dot env file because of the way we've managed to customize things up 
And also, we want to be able to create what are called aliases. So let's just nano our dot aliases file. And the keyword for this is alias. So before it was export, now it's alias. So let's say you wanted to make your own command. Let's say we're in the home directory. We then cd to dollar sign dot files, and we want to get back to the directory directory we were in before. Well, usually what you would do is you'd either just cd back to your home directory because you knew that's where it was, or you would cd hyphen. Or what you could do is we could use our alias. So let's make an alias. Let's call it bk which, that's just my personal preference, that's what I want to call it. I want it so when you type BK, it brings you back to where you were before. And we're just going to set that equal to... And we're going to use quotes to surround everything to make sure nothing screws up. CD hyphen, and ta -da. Now what will happen is when you type in BK, it will go back. However, not immediately, because remember, we need to source our aliases file first of all. So, let's create another one. Um, let me just quickly go on to my other Linux machine to check which ones I have, because I can't currently think of any. I know dot aliases. Oh yes, I also have, I use this a lot, I have an alias called lsa, and it calls ls with the hyphen a parameter, the hyphen l parameter, and the color parameter. I find that so much, yeah, I can just go lsa, and it'll give me all the information on the files I need. I also, I don't use this as commonly, but I also have hm, which just sees me to home. And I also have the alias off, which I don't really like the name of, I'm thinking of changing that. And that just sudo shut down hyphen h now, so that just shuts down your computer. So there are my favorite aliases. My general tip for an alias is to make it short, so it's very easy to use, and it can make you know, long complex commands a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot easier. But generally, you're only going to want one line and alias, and you're going to be using, uh, you know, you might want to use scripts like Python scripts or Ruby scripts if you want anything more complicated than just one line shortened to a shorter command. And I'll probably show you about that and how to do that in another video. Or you can just go ahead and look at my Python tutorials and then just type the keyword Python space your Python file. But anyway, I've gone off track a bit. Point is, alias is really, really useful for condensing a really long or complex thing into single word or so. And it can really increase your workflow and productivity, so instead of having to type every time ls hyphen a hyphen l, I usually wouldn't bother with hyphen hyphen color, but it's a nice little thing to have. I can just type in lsa enter, I'll get everything I need, and there we go. So let's just save this and make sure everything works. In fact, no, there's one more thing, one more thing, which is my alias for reloading aliases, which I think is very important. So, my alias R Ali for reload alias is how I remember that. And it's just sources, home directory, and then our main bash RC file. So, that's then going to recall our system variables. And re it really shouldn't be called R Ali, it should be called. Um, I don't know, I can't think of a better name for it. I'll just keep it called R Alley. But basically, it doesn't only do the aliases, it also does our you know, system variables and everything else. So let's just save this. Unfortunately, we can't use R Alley to reload because we need to actually source the file before we're allowed to use R Alley. But let's just go nano into. Not nano, what am I talking about? Sorry about that. Let's cd dot slash and let's just source dot bash rc from here. Of course, we could also source the one from the home directory, or we could individually source our dot env and dot aliases files. So you'll now see we can type r alley, it does that for us, and we can type lsa, it does that for us, and we can also type off, and it will do that for us. So that is the end of this video, and have a nice day.